Denise here. I saw you in Miami a couple of weeks ago, and you had hinted around retirement. But I think the industry really surprised as to why you are stepping down now at a time when the cruise industry is still in recovery mode. So, so why now? Um, well, hi, Seema. Um, couldn't be more excited. This is um, uh, this. The time just really felt right. In terms of uh, COVID-19, we're clearly coming out. We're, it's not behind us yet, but the pathway forward is very clear. Uh, we're about to be starting our new growth phase. In fact, I just come off of a naming ceremony of a celebrity ship uh, last weekend. And this weekend, as we're restarting, I'm going on board uh, Odyssey of the Seas for the Royal Caribbean International brand. So this was a good time for me. It was a good time for the company. And we had a good leader to take over. So the stars just aligned and um, I'm not sure who's happier, me or Jason. Yeah, Jason Liberty, the current CFO, will succeed you as CEO. He's been a long time uh, a Royal Caribbean guy. Uh, but given that the industry is dramatically changing, cruising will look very different 10 years from now, I, I imagine. Was there consideration to bring on an external candidate, someone from hospitality or, or even Silicon Valley at a time where you have someone like Richard Branson now with a new cruise offering? Well, you know, um, it will look different 10 years from now. It, look, it looks different today than it did 10 years ago. And that's part of our process. We believe in continuous improvement. We can believe in continuous change. And we had the ideal person in-house. Jason has worked side by side with me for the last 16 of my 33 years. He's been involved in every strategic initiative we've had. So we felt we had a really good candidate in-house. And also, and, and not insignificantly, we had real bench strength. Throughout the company, we have really top people. And I think that's what made us feel comfortable in making this move today. Richard, would you have ever thought 30 years ago that you would, would have... 6,000 people on one ship. You really led the evolution of what cruise lines uh, look like right now with cutting edge and now the largest ships on the market. But I'm wondering going forward, I know you're going to play uh, a specific role still going forward with, with the development of new ships for Royal Caribbean. What do these new ships look like at a time when the millennials, they're really preferring Airbnbs over hotels. They're, they're craving those new experiences. Well, and, and your word you use is exactly right, Seema. It's experiences. Um, people want that. During the pandemic, we were stuck in our homes and we shifted back towards buying things. But people want to get out there and experience things. As you say, I, I never would have imagined 33 years ago that one new ship would be bigger than our largest fleet was back then. But we're constantly changing. I think that's what's so exciting at the Royal Caribbean Group is we're constantly learning, constantly improving. So our ships keep getting better and we are responding. It's not just the ships, it's the private destinations, it's the technology, it's the sustainability. The, the scope of the job has really expanded over these years and I couldn't be more pleased about that. And, I, and Jason's been part of that all the time. So I, I know he's going to take it to the next level. Richard, it's Morgan. Um, just to dig into that a little bit more and the fact that, that there are these changes afoot. I mean, the company is and the whole industry is still um, moving into or hopefully into a full recovery next year coming out of this pandemic. I mean, with billions of dollars in debt to stay afloat through the pandemic, how are you balancing that versus that new ship construction over the coming years? Um, well, um, I think the strength of this, this has always been a cash flow business. It's a highly capital intense business, but once you have the, the ships, um, they become cash cows. And that's basically the way we have worked in the past. And we see that happening now. Already we're seeing forward bookings for, particularly after next summer, extremely strong, even by historical standards. And so that will generate the cash flow that we need to pay down the debt, to reinvest in our technology, reinvest in our sustainability efforts, reinvest in our new ships. Um, and yeah, that's what that's the cycle that we're in. And it looks we've had a huge uh, chasm to get over, but now it looks like we're well on the way towards getting back to the way we were before and even better. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.